Well, hi class, I'd like to officially welcome you to the start of the 2021 fall semester for the Introduction to Public Speaking course and aren't you lucky? We're still online. I've been telling students ever since this pandemic hit that this is a great time to take public speaking, especially if you deal with a lot of nervous anxiety, because now instead of walking up in front of a full classroom to give your presentation, you can be in your room talking to your phone or talking to a laptop. So a pretty good time to take a public speaking class. In fact, I can remember when I was teaching in the early 90s and that was kind of the ad advent of the internet. Internet just starting to get popular. That's when we first started hearing talk about teaching college courses online. And back then I would always say, no way would I ever teach a public speaking class online because students aren't going to get that experience of just kind of feeling that anxiety and that rush that you get when your name's called and you'll walk up, you set your stance in front of the audience and then get into your presentation. But I have found through teaching this class online that you're still going to get all of the skills and the principles that you need to be an effective public speaker and you'll be able to develop those skills. And so with this class, you just want to make sure that you take what you learn from the class and if you apply it, you'll be just fine when you get up in front of an audience and taking a class like this online, I think it makes it even easier to really build your confidence as a speaker. And look, I know that most of you coming into this class are nervous about speaking in public. It's what we call speech apprehension. In fact, number one phobia in the US, glossophobia, is the fear of public speaking. And if you've been on Canvas and you've seen that little opening video with Jerry Seinfeld, the second leading phobia is the fear of death. So basically, when I'm teaching public speaking, I'm dealing with people that would rather die than take the class. But I really want to assure you that in this class, I'm going to teach you how to deal with that nervous anxiety. And it's not about getting over the anxiety or completely overcoming the fear associated with public speaking. What we're going to learn how to do is how to control it. And kind of the key in terms of dealing with that nervous anxiety in public speaking is to be the only one who knows that you're nervous. And boy, when we're in the classroom, I'm teaching this class, student gets up, does a really good job on their speech. They walk back to their seat. I give them a little fist bump, tell them nice job. And then sometimes they go, oh, I was so scared when I was up there. I was so nervous. And the response they usually hear from me, yeah, but we couldn't tell. And that's what we're dealing with when we're talking about controlling that anxiety. We want to be able to control it and, management so it and manage it so it doesn't affect adversely the overall presentation. And we're also going to learn that probably one of the most important aspects of being an effective public speaker is developing that confidence. And so that's one thing that I'm really going to work hard on with you in this class is to really develop your confidence in your ability to speak in front of others. You'll find when we get into the way that the class is set up, even with the grading system that I use, it's all about building your confidence. Because I know once you start feeling comfortable and confident when it comes to public speaking, the rest is downhill. And we don't want to let anything get in the way of our ability to speak to others. Because ultimately, our voice is our power, especially when we live in a democratic society. It kind of is, is interesting that, you know, we don't get a lot of training in K through 12 when it comes to public speaking. You, you would think that it would be just the opposite. We want to train individuals to be confident about using their voice because that's how we grow and develop as a democratic society. Could be people at the top don't want you to develop your public speaking skills. So remember, your voice is your power and you can use your voice to bring about social change. All right, enough preaching for now. Today, what I'd like to do in our lecture, I wanna go over the syllabus and I wanna cover a couple things to get you ready for your first upcoming speech, the introductory speech. And to do that, 
let's go ahead and jump on the Canvas shell. I'm going to walk you through the syllabus, and then we'll end up by talking about some things that you'll want to make sure you do well on that introductory speech. Let's go to the modules now on the Canvas shell. All right, so we're on the syllabus here. Here you have some background information on me. You read through this, the one thing you can probably tell, I've been doing this for a long, long time. And uh, as far as my contact information, here you have my email address. If you ever have a question or concern, something you're struggling with something in terms of the course content, just send me an email. I am here to help you. In fact, I really want you to look at me more as a coach than a professor or an instructor because really what I'm all about is to make you a better public speaker. I want to do everything I can to help you maximize your full potential as a speaker. So I'm here for you. I want you to be successful. I'm on your side. And even though we don't have any mandatory meetings throughout the semester. This is an asynchronous class. If you would like some face-to-face -face time, just send me an email, let me know. I'll set up a meeting on Zoom, and here is the Zoom ID and the passcode you will need for any Zoom meeting. So even though we don't have any mandatory meetings, I'm more than happy to work with any of you individually if you need that individual help. All right. So what I want to do now is let's go ahead and take a look at some of the course details. I just want you can read all of this. It's pretty self-explanatory, but I want to focus on the student learning outcomes for this class. And essentially, you'll find in a second when we go over the grading policy, but you have a lot of control over your grade in this class. And you'll learn that a lot of this class in your grade will come down to you coming up with three goals and then we'll measure how well you meet those goals. But I also have some goals for you for this class, and we find those in the student learning outcomes. And really, if you want to get an A in the class, it's a matter of meeting your goals and mine. And I'm going to make that even easier. The first goal that I have right here, demonstrate proficiency at organizing and presenting information to an audience, what this really focuses on, I want you at the, by the end of the class to know how to put together a good academic speech outline. And so when it comes to public speaking, we don't write essays. We write outlines. And that's a little bit different, especially if you're incorporating evidence into the outline and learning how to cite your sources of evidence during the speech. Like, we usually don't see speeches, and then at the end of the speech, the speaker will go, oh, and by the way, Here's my work cited where I got the info. No, usually you're going to hear that during the actual flow of the speech. That's all part of the structure and the organization that goes into public speaking. In fact, when it comes to public speaking and take a class like this, I think most of you coming into the class, if I asked you, okay, well, what do you expect to learn? You're going to focus more on the presentation stuff. Well, I'm going to learn how to give an effective presentation, like where I should look. How can I use my voice effectively? How can I cut down on using vocal fillers like um and uh? How do I stand? How do I control the stand? What do I do with my hands in terms of gesturing when I'm giving the speech? And that's accurate. We'll learn all of those delivery techniques. But what often goes overlooked in a class like this is learning how to write an outline for a speech, right? You just don't magically get up in front of people and have things to say. You've got to prepare your speech, and the way we do that is we learn how to put an outline together. So if you want to get an A in the class, you've got to demonstrate you know how to write a speech outline. You know how to structure a speech. You know how to incorporate sources of evidence into the flow of the speech. That's real important. And the cool thing is you'll also learn there are different organizational and structural formats that you can use depending on the type of the speech. When we go over the modules in a second, you'll see that you're going to do both an informative and a persuasive speech in this class. Those two speeches will utilize different organizational formats. So the whole structure, the organization, learning how to put outlines together for a speech, real important part of this class. And then you also want to make sure that you build your confidence. You want to make sure that 
when it comes to public speaking, you'll feel comfortable and confident in your ability. And really when it comes down to public speaking, the key issue is developing that confidence. You get confident in your ability to speak in public, the rest is easy because the actual techniques that we're learning aren't that difficult. In fact, if you really look at it, look at people, open mouth and talk, we've been doing that for most of our lives. So it's not the skill set that's difficult, it's getting that confidence to give you the ability to maximize your full potential as a speaker, and that all begins with our confidence. And so, you want a good grade in this class, you better be confident in your ability to speak in public by the end of the semester. And then the other thing as far as my goals, you want to be able to speak effectively in front of a variety of audiences when it comes to public speaking. And there, the real emphasis when it comes to being an effective public speaker is to know how to practice effectively. And so one thing I'm big on in this class, you've got to demonstrate you know the importance of practice when it comes to public speaking. I mean, it makes sense that people get nervous when they speak in public, especially if they don't realize the importance of practice, right? Public speaking isn't about, okay, my speech is written, it's fresh off the press, now I'm going to give a flawless presentation. No, it takes time. You have to practice. If you're in a play, the director doesn't give you your lines right before you start the play. No, you get them weeks in advance so you can do what? So you can practice. Same thing with public speaking. It's a performance. If you want to be good, you've got to do the work, you've got to do the preparation, you've got to do the practice. If you simply practice your speech, Imagine what that does to your confidence. So if you want to be a more confident public speaker, just put in the practice it takes to become a confident public speaker. So in terms of my goals, I want to make sure you know how to structure a speech, you're confident in your ability to speak in public, and you learn that you really gain that confidence from being able to practice efficiently and effectively. So at the end of the semester, we'll figure out how well you met my goals and yours, to determine your overall grade. And then the last thing I want to draw your attention to here on the grade, oh, let's go to a different one. Let's go right here to the grading policies. And here, as I just said, kind of break down, here's how the grading works for this particular class. You have a lot of responsibility for your grade. And in your very first speech that you'll be doing at the end of next week, your introductory speech, Part of that assignment will be for you to establish the three goals that you want to accomplish during this course as we navigate through the semester. And you want your goals to be clear and you want them to be measurable. Like, okay, we can measure those at the end. So if your goal is to build your confidence as a speaker, cool. We can look at your introductory video at the start of the semester. Then we can look at your farewell speech at the end of the semester you should look a lot more confident in that speech. And so essentially you're creating three goals that we can measure to determine your overall grade. And getting an A is not a goal. Getting an A is a result of meeting your goals. So maybe things like learning how to structure and organize a speech effectively, that'd be a great goal. Or learning how to cut down on using ums and uhs, what we call vocal emphasis. That's a cool goal. Learning to become more confident in your ability to speak and not being so fearful of public speaking. That is a goal to accomplish. So in that introductory video, you're going to come up with three goals for the class. And then at the end of the semester, you'll actually write your final assessment You'll defend how well you met your goals to determine your overall grade. And then the one thing that I'm concerned about, I too want to make sure that you not only meet your goals, but you know how to structure a speech. You know the importance of practice and you're a, you're a confident public speaker. And then here, oh, also too, all of the assignments that you do will be graded either as a complete or incomplete. So no letter grades again really different style of grading you on your assignments, but I really do that to help build your confidence. And then you want to make sure that once you submit your work, once I grade it, I'm going to indicate your grade right here. 
So you'll find either a complete or incomplete. But where I do a lot of my work is right here in the comments. So after each speech, this is going to be pretty full. You're going to have five, six paragraphs, maybe even a page of here's what you're doing well. We want to continue to reinforce that. Here are things that you want to work on for the next speech. And so realize too that with public speaking, you're a work in progress. And so essentially, we're just trying to get you to the point where you are better and better and better as we move from speech to speech. So at the end of the semester, you've met all of your goals. If you have any other questions on the syllabus, make sure uh, just go ahead and hit me up. And then, oh, one other thing. Yeah, here we go. On the grading policies, just kind of take a look at the class workload expectation because we keep track of your hours. I know how many hours you spend on campus. And so if you look at this chart right here for a class like ours for the semester, kind of the magic number would be 108 hours for this class. I just want you to be well over 50 hours. So you just wanna make sure that you read through all the materials, you watch all of the instructional videos, you wanna do that because that'll get your hours up on campus. And you want to make sure that you're utilizing all of the available information. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the modules. Last thing that I want to do is just kind of give you an overview of the different assignments and speeches that you will be doing this semester. So here in the week one module, this is pretty simple. Just a lot of stuff, making sure that you're good to go on Canvas, you know how to navigate the class. And then one thing I do want to point out right here in student services, Let's take a look at that. Two things that you want to be aware of right here. If you need any help working on Canvas, like you know, maybe you're having trouble uploading a video or getting your video embedded, rather than sending me an email, go right to the Canvas help desk because they're the expert. You know, I've just been learning Canvas too. I didn't use Canvas much till we went online. And so I'm constantly learning but I'm not the expert. So you're probably going to get a faster, better response if you have issues with Canvas specifically by going to the Canvas help desk. And then down here, if you haven't utilized the online library yet, use this class to really learn how to navigate and utilize the on online library for students. You can click on this right here. And if you're not familiar with using the online library, Click on this, ask to set up a meeting with a reference librarian. And a reference librarian, their job is to help you do research during the course of the semester and ask them just to show you how to use all the different databases. Because if you want to do well in college, you've got to become adept at doing college level research. And don't use Wikipedia, don't use encyclopedias, those are frowned upon in college level work. Also, don't rely on websites. Websites should always be a last resort because the information we get on websites isn't rely as reliable as information that's actually published in something. So you want to really learn how to utilize the library and all of the academic search engines because this will make your college work so much easier. And I can tell you this, the higher up you go on the academic ladder, more and more emphasis on doing research and writing papers and giving presentations. So if you want to do well in your college career, you've got to become proficient at doing college level research. If you haven't started to learn that yet, use this semester to do it. You can get lots of help at the library. Reference librarians, librarians are there to help you do your research. You want to get real proficient at using the online library systems. And the nice thing is when you transfer and go to a university, they're going to use all the same databases that we have here at Solana. So you want to make sure you take advantage of the online library early on in your academic career. Okay. Also to make sure that you watch these how to videos, especially this one right here, <clears throat> all of your videos, when you submit them, they must be embedded in Maybe you haven't heard that before. I hadn't before I started doing stuff online. But if you just watch this simple video, it's real easy to do. It will show you how to embed your videos. And then if we go to 
next week's module. Just a little bit more information on the class, but essentially your first assignment is the introductory video that we just talked about. And you want to make sure in that introductory video you present your three goals. I'll give you a little bit more information on the delivery of that once I finish going through the modules. Then if you just kind of go through the modules, you're going to notice that a lot of the assignments are more just kind of what I call self-discovery and just learning more about yourself, kind of, you know, how you develop your self-image to this point, your confidence level, how we can improve the confidence level, how can we uh, gain more control over controlling speech anxiety. So you're going to do some papers and a lot of discussions with the class, and that's important because the more we know each other, the stronger the community in our class, the easier it is to build confidence and for you to control that anxiety. So that's real important. This is important work that we're doing in the early part of the semester. What we're really doing is helping to build our comfort level when we start doing some more speeches in the class. Also too, and this is gonna suck, but it's important. For this speech right here, the introductory video, not only are you to submit your speech, but I want you to watch and comment on each of your classmates' videos. And I know some classes, we've got a lot of students, but that's so important in terms of building our community. If we were in the classroom, you would be watching every speech and commenting on the speech. So we've got to be able to do that online as well. It takes a little bit more work, but a great way to do that is watch everybody's video and then couple comments on each of their videos and you're going to learn. We learn by watching other people speak and good way to kind of get those hours up on canvas right off the bat. So make sure you do that. Then for the rest of the speeches and assignments, you only have to comment on three of your classmates. Not all of them were only doing this at the very start with the introductory speech. All right, so we kind of navigate the different things that we're learning from week to week, and then we get down to week eight, and then that's your next big speech. That's the critic speech. We're going to use this speech to show you how to put an outline together in the critic speech. Simple, three to five minute speech. All you're doing here is, as far as your topic, needs to be on a form of entertainment, like a TV show. Could be in a movie. Could be on a video game. Heck, I can see, I consider eating a form of entertainment. It could be a speech on a restaurant. You're going to tell us about it. You're going to give us your evaluation as far as what you like and didn't like. We're going to learn how to do an outline with that speech, the critic speech. Then we really just have two big speeches left. The informative speech, you'll have three weeks to work on that. That's what we call an academic speech because with the informative speech, you'll be required to have research and evidence to support whatever you're teaching us in the speech and an informative speech. It's a speech where essentially you're teaching the audience about something and it shouldn't focus on a problem to be solved or an issue of controversy. So informative speeches focus more on doing a speech on an individual, right? Doing a speech on a particular place or doing a speech on some kind of invention, some kind of thing. All those fall into that big category of informative speaking. And notice right here, You'll turn in your outline one week before you submit your presentation. The reason why you use that entire week to practice. Again, big thing I'm after with this class, I want you to understand the importance of practice and how vital that is to being an effective speaker. So much so that I give you a week to practice the informative speech once you have your outline done until you give the presentation. Then we're gonna take another three weeks. We're gonna focus on persuasive speaking. Same thing as far as an academic speech, we required to have evidence and research into the presentation, but the persuasive speech, different from the informative speech in the sense with the persuasive speech, now we're focusing on a problem to be solved and essentially trying to persuade the audience to take action, to do something to solve that problem. Or you can give a persuasive speech where you're focusing on an issue of controversy you're taking one side on the issue of controversy. Again, same deal. You'll turn in the outline, week to practice, then do your presentation. You'll have one final speech. That's a little farewell speech where you tell us what you learned. And then last assignment, 
You'll turn in your final assessment. This is a written assignment, basically, where you're negotiating for your final grade. So there you have it as far as the modules. Also, too, real important. Each lecture will initially come out on announcements at 8 o'clock a.m. every Tuesday. But I will also house each lecture for each week here at the very last module, weekly course lectures. So you actually have two places where you can watch the instructional lectures that I put out each week. You can go right here to announcements. That's where it will initially be. But also each lecture will be at the very last module for all of the weekly lectures. And you want to make sure that you just utilize all the information. And you know, basically we get two kinds of students, right? We get the students that read everything, you watch all the instructional videos, you utilize all the available information. Those are the students that end up doing well and getting A's in the class. And then we have the other students that when you get to a module, you just go, shit, 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 shit. oh, let's just go to the assignment. And then you just do the assignment, but it's jacked up because you haven't read any of the information. And that's frustrating because I put a lot of time and effort into all the stuff that we have in the modules. I mean, putting a Canvas shell together, it's like writing a textbook and creating a website. And so we do that so you have access to all the info. So don't turn in a crappy assignment. And then in the comments, I have to go over everything that you should have read in the first place. That gets annoying. So make sure you utilize, you read all the information and you make sure that you watch all of the instructional videos because you're responsible for that information. And if you don't have that information, you're not going to do well in the class. All right. Last thing, couple things I wanna go over as far as the introductory speech that's coming up in two weeks because some of you are already starting to work on that. So your very first speech assignment will be the introductory speech. And with that presentation, and that's due at the end of next week, really, I just want you to focus on three things. The first thing is make sure that you clearly articulate the three goals that you have that you want to accomplish in this class for the semester. The second thing is you want to make sure that you know where to look when you're speaking remotely. And that's kind of tricky because our eyes are just kind of naturally drawn to the screen. But if you're just looking at the screen, when we're watching you, we're just kind of watching you give a presentation to your imaginary friend. So you want to make sure that you pop your eyes up and that your eye contact is focused on the camera lens, either at the top of your laptop or the camera lens on your phone. That's where you look when you're speaking remotely. Because if we were doing this in the classroom and you're up giving a presentation, it'd be real easy to figure out what to do with your eyes. You just look at the audience when you're speaking, but we don't have that luxury when speaking remotely. So rather we're creating the illusion of looking at our viewers. We're making it seem like we're talking directly to the audience, but all we're really doing is we're speaking to the camera lens. And so you've really got to get that eye contact dialed in when you're giving a presentation remotely. And if you just want, like now, like you watch the news, a lot of talk shows when they have guests on, a lot of the guests are remote, right? They're not actually in the studio. And so those are all good examples of how they're establishing eye contact. You'll notice that they're not looking at the screen, that they're looking up into the camera. So it looks like they're talking directly to you. That's what I want to see with the introductory speeches. I want your eye contact dialed in so you're looking right into that lens. And then you just want to be as comfortable, as relaxed as you possibly can be. And so I always tell students, when it comes to public speaking, it's not like you have to turn in to, you know, super speaker or super speaking mode, just be yourself. All you're really doing when you're speaking in public is you're having a conversation with the audience. And so I always tell students, when you're giving a presentation, just pretend you're talking to friends. And so you just wanna be natural, you wanna be conversational, you wanna be personable. Smiles are great, 
those all help to engage the audience and pull them into your presentation. And in terms of the speaking style that you use, since we're doing this remotely, be creative. Because there's lots of different ways that we can speak to a computer or a phone. I mean, most students go with what I call kind of the podcast format. That's where you're seated in front of your recording device. And so a little closer as far as the actual shot. It could be that you want to move the camera back a little bit further, bring the top down. This is kind of cool, especially when you get to the point and you're using notes for your speeches. You can have your notes on the screen, but if you're back a little bit further, maybe three, four feet between you and the recording device, now I can kind of make it look like I'm looking into the camera, but I can also see the screen. So it's kind of like you can have a teleprompter. You just want to make sure that it doesn't look or sound like you're reading your presentation. I get some students where we get the eye contact dialed in and then, and now for my next point, and then you see their eyes kind of going like this with their reading. That doesn't work. So you've got to create that illusion of speaking to the audience. And if you're cheating just a little bit, so you maintain the eye contact, but you're still seeing the actual script of the speech, that's fine. I just don't want to be able to tell that you're reading your speech. You've got to really use your voice to have a nice conversational tone. We'll get into that more in the future. But a good way to do that is to use what we call vocal variety. That's where you're always shifting your rate and your volume. You never let your audience get comfortable with your vocal pattern. All right. The last way that you can deliver speech as well, you can move the recording device way back so we see your entire body and you can do a speech actually standing up. I get some students who do that. As we navigate through the semester two, I'll have one lecture where I just teach you how to maintain, how to establish and maintain a proper stance when you're giving a presentation. But for now, you just want to make sure that you're going through the week one module. Once you get through that, go ahead. It's okay. Start working on that introductory speech that'll be due at the end of next week. Also make sure that you have good, encouraging, supportive comments for all of your classmates to you do that. We build a real strong community and guess what? Everybody feels a whole lot more confidence each time that we speak. Folks, your voice is your power. Let's learn to utilize it this semester.